I needed to open more stuff to get parts for upcoming projects, so I think these contain what I need. And this one, according to the tracking number, should be adjustable voltage regulators. And I have the 5 volt and 3.3 volt version of this. The reason for these regulators is on this PCB for this slide pot with the motor on it, this needs a 5 volt supply and something around 8 to 10 volts for the motor. So I wanted to do a PCB using adjustable regulators to get exactly what I want. And in case I needed something a little more or less to get the motor working well, I would have flexibility to just change the resistor and change the voltage. So that will be a project coming up within the next several weeks. And speaking of regulators, the description on here leads me to believe these are switching isolated DC to DC converters. I see two of them in there. And these are not exactly the same. They're similar to this 5 volt in, 5 volt out isolated converter that I used on this board to give me an isolated boost voltage up to 27 volts. But these take 5 volts in and give 24 out, or 12 volts in and give 24 out. So they're physically a little larger. And that's just to give me some more flexibility. If I don't just want 5 in, 5 out, I just want to deal with other supply rails. I've used this type of product a few times in a few PCBs and I thought I'm just going to diversify a bit, so why not add a few different parts to the collection? This one says telephone cable. I know that's a lie because I ordered a telephone jack PCB mount. Yes, luckily they did not send a cable. Looks like I got 10 of these. So that's the standard RJ11 type of size connector for telephones or similar applications. And it's a six position, six conductor. So it has all six possible pins populated in case this is going to be used for anything else. But really, I got it just to get the center two for the tip and ring of a telephone line. And just to make sure it's fitting. Yep, that's it. So what I want to do, I want to do some telephone experiments, including an actual telephone to see if I can get it to work without a real landline service, just with some electronics, including generating ring signals. And I also want to do some modem stuff with old computers. So I want to have a PCB where Let's say this is two different PCBs. I want to have some other control circuitry, generate ringtones and such, be able to dial out from one, receive calls from the other, and either answer it and be able to talk on the line, or make a modem to modem connection. So I need a PCB that can take these jacks and do what I need to do, and it'll be a lot neater and easier to deal with than the mess I've been prototyping with. So I look forward to getting those up and running and cleaning up the work area. Now this one I just randomly threw in the pile. It said PCB. Okay, oh it's a surface mount. Arrgh. Surface mount to dip through hole adapters. Different, uh, two different ones it looks like, if not, yeah, three. So this has standard SOIC eight pins of one size here and a smaller version there. Looks like I have a 20 pin version here. So I, I don't remember if I have a 20 pin chip I need to put on one of these, but the other thing I can do is just populate the first eight pins or 14 or 16 for other standard logic chip type families and use this as a universal socket. And this one is specifically a 14 pin. So for example, chips that are only available in surface mount, like AT Tiny 0 series, 1 series, etc. To use them on a breadboard, this makes it doable without having to find some other way to get wires on there or commit to a PCB design 
up front. This one is called Bracket Support, but I think I know what this is. I guess it is a bracket support, but yes, that is a microphone clip-on attachment for drums. So you just slide a microphone in there. I guess there's some sort of adjustment here. Okay, that's a height adjustment. You can clip this on to the edge of a drum and looks like we can adjust, oh, too far as needed. And you tighten this down. So this is just plastic, but it's flexible. So you clamp it down to stay secure. It'll probably snap in several years, but okay. So when this is on the drum, then you can just adjust the angle of the microphone as needed and record the drums. And I'm not exactly planning to do that with this just yet, at least. I'd need some lessons first. I'll need to get a spare light out of ceiling storage. Let's go on tour and see what I'm up to. So now that's clipped on and tightened down and just gripping the rim here. So that's pretty good. Now we can take a microphone if we want. There's a screw on the side to adjust this, so I'd have to tighten it, I guess. Lock that in place. But then you can record each individual drum with these clip-on devices. But that's not exactly what I'm planning to do, so let me get this out. All I really wanted was a way to clip something onto each drum. And then I may even take this microphone attachment part out and make something even out of wood and bolt that here and it'll come out as far as I need. What if I take some solenoids? With some fine tuning, of course. Maybe this is something that will have a project. So I'm going to have a lot of projects going on over the next couple of weeks and months, which is all thanks in a large part to Patreon supporters and channel members. Stay tuned and see what I get up to.